For the team from Milton Keynes, 2018 has been moderately successful, already winning some races. But for the team from Woking, 2018 has quite frankly been a disaster and an embarrassment that has no end. So in this video, I'm going to look at Red Bull and McLaren's 2018 so far and also their best and worst races of 2018 and what they can improve upon. Pre-season for Red Bull compared to last year was way better, as the issues of correlation that affected their pre-season in 2017 did not arise, allowing pre-season in 2018 to be mostly successful, with the confidence of the team a lot higher because of the improved pace. And after Friday practice in Australia, it did look like Red Bull had made massive improvements compared to 2017. But the first race in Melbourne went on to be quite a disappointment, as Max Verstappen finished in P6 after spinning his car during the race, and Daniel Ricciardo only just missed out on a podium, finishing P4 after starting in P8 because of a penalty. But still, the car definitely had a lot of potential. But in Bahrain, once again, it was not realised after Max Verstappen retired from the race after colliding with Lewis Hamilton, and Daniel Ricciardo's Renault power unit completely failed after just five laps. That was now two races full of massive disappointment. But once we got to Shanghai, Red Bull finally delivered, as Daniel Ricciardo went on to win the Chinese Grand Prix in brilliant fashion. And it was made even better with the fact that Daniel Ricciardo and FP3 had an engine failure, coming through all of that turmoil and still winning the race performing stunning moves on Lewis Hamilton, Sebastian Vettel and especially Valtteri Bottas. But the race in Shanghai could have been even better for Red Bull if Max Verstappen had not made costly mistakes. After going off the track when trying to pass Lewis Hamilton and crashing into Sebastian Vettel, he lost what could have been a race win. And also for the team, what could have been a 1-2 finish. So again, despite the victory, it definitely could have been better. But in Baku, all of that happiness was completely wiped out as the two Red Bull drivers collided during the race. As Daniel Ricciardo was desperate to get past and Max Verstappen was very aggressive, even too aggressive in defending his position. And that resulted in the two making contact going down into Turn 1 in Baku, costing the team at least 20 points, which is vital. Maybe this is why Daniel Ricciardo has decided to go to Renault for 2019, who knows. But then at the Spanish Grand Prix, they bounced back with a podium finish for Max Verstappen. And the pace of the Red Bull car at this Grand Prix was not too bad, but also was not that great. But at this point in the season, it was clear that Red Bull were making gains on both Mercedes and Ferrari. And that point was proven once we came to Monaco, where despite an Erz problem, Daniel Ricciardo won the Monaco Grand Prix. Because even with that Erz issue, Daniel Ricciardo was still comfortably able to hold off Sebastian Vettel because the Red Bull car that weekend quite frankly was on rails in terms of pace. And for Ricardo, it was a deserved win because he did have a win at Monaco robbed back in 2016. So finally, he got the Monaco Grand Prix win that he clearly deserved. But for Max Verstappen, he was in big trouble once again. In practice three, he had a big crash, meaning that he missed qualifying basically because he pushed too hard. And for Max in 2018, this was a clear turning point because at this point the criticism was just mounting up against Verstappen, and he quite frankly had to stop crashing and he had to improve. And once we came to Canada, that's exactly what Max did, providing in my opinion the performance of the weekend as he qualified in third and finished in third, responding superbly well to his critics. And I'm not ashamed to say I definitely was one of them. Then in France, where the Red Bull car just wasn't really quick at all, they still got a podium again with Max Verstappen finishing in P2, who again drove really well and stayed out of trouble. But for Daniel Ricciardo, he did have some bad luck in preventing him getting a podium, as some kind of debris got into his front wing and that allowed Kimi Raikkonen to pass him for third place. But still a good race for the Red Bull team. But when it came to qualifying at their home Grand Prix in Austria, Red Bull were not looking good. Qualifying P5 and P7 with the hearts of Roman Grosjean splitting them on the grid. But race day in Austria turned out to be one of their best days of 2018. As Max Verstappen and Red Bull capitalised brilliantly on the virtual safety car and pitted. And because Lewis Hamilton did not pit that allowed Max Verstappen to take the lead. And on that day nobody could beat him as he went on to win at Red Bull's home track. A brilliant day for team and driver. 
especially for Max Verstappen after the criticism he received in 2018 before that point. But they came crashing back down to earth at Silverstone, where because of the very fast nature now of the track, it was basically a power circuit. Which, of course, with the Red Bull having a Renault power unit, they are going to massively struggle. Meaning that in qualifying, they were miles off Mercedes and Ferrari. And in the race, despite at one point being in a podium position with Max Verstappen, they still did not have good pace. As Max Verstappen eventually retired from the race and Daniel Ricciardo finished in P5. Then in Germany, once again, it was not a good race. Max Verstappen did all he could but still finished in P4. Meanwhile, Daniel Ricciardo had to start at the back because of changes to his power unit and then retired from the race with a problem. But no matter, once we came to Hungary, it was expected that Red Bull would have the best car. But in what was a surprising turn of events, they did not. And even in qualifying in the wet, where they're normally good, they massively struggled. And then Max Verstappen in the race retired after only six laps again because of Renault, with Daniel Ricciardo finishing P4 after coming back from P12 on the grid. So not great form there for Red Bull heading into the summer break. But still, 2018 so far has been mostly good for Red Bull. In the constructors right now, they're third with 223 points, with three race wins and also one pole position. And for Daniel Ricciardo, I would say that 2018 so far has mostly been good. He's currently fifth in the Drivers' Championship with 118 points, but has two race wins in China and Monaco and one pole position also at Monaco. But for Max, because of his bad start to the season, his stats don't look that great. He is sixth in the Drivers' Championship with 105 points. He has one race win at the Austrian Grand Prix, but no pole positions. In a season so far for Max, which I think definitely could have been better. Now, in my opinion, Red Bull's best race of 2018 so far was the Canadian Grand Prix. Now, I understand that many people will say Monaco because they got pole and the race win. But the reason I put Canada higher is because Canada is a power circuit where normally Red Bull struggle. But despite that, in qualifying, Max Verstappen was only quarter of a second off pole position. In a car that at that track should be nowhere near the Ferrari. And Red Bull's pace in the race also was very impressive as they finished in P3 and P4. So again, because they are normally not good at a power dominant circuit, that has to be their best race. But for me, their worst race was the previous race in Budapest. This track should suit Red Bull to an absolute T, but it didn't. And yes, Ferrari and Mercedes have much more powerful power units, but still, they should be good. And to be so poor in wet conditions with a P7 and a P12 in qualifying, again, not good enough. And that weekend for me is still a massive disappointment. Now for the drivers, in my opinion, Daniel Ricciardo this year has been mostly good. In the first seven or eight races, I thought Daniel was one of the best drivers so far this year. But since Austria, he has not been that good. He has had some bad luck, of course, but still his performance has dipped. But still for Daniel, it is mostly positive. For Max, though, it's about 50-50. Because we've had 12 races so far, and in the first six races, Max was not good. Very inconsistent, was crashing a lot, and making very simple mistakes. But since then, has definitely improved his pace and also his composure. And I don't think anyone can doubt that Max, since the Canadian Grand Prix, has been one of the best drivers on the grid. But after the first 12 races, again, it is still 50-50. Can Red Bull get any more race wins in 2018? They really should at tracks like Singapore and Mexico, but of course, after their performance in Hungary, who knows? We're just going to have to wait and see. Going into pre-season, things were looking great for McLaren. They finally got rid of Honda and were looking forward to going after Red Bull because McLaren thought they had one of the best chassis on the grid. But after pre-season, that was proven not to be the case at all as they had plenty of reliability issues and also a major crash on day one. Pre-season could not have gone any worse for McLaren and it was not looking good going into the actual season. But in Australia, surprised us all with a great result as Fernando Alonso finished in 5th and Stoffel van Dorn finished in P9. And it seemed that McLaren had definitely made some big improvements from pre-season going into Australia. Their qualifying pace was not good, but their race pace was actually quite impressive. Could they maintain this kind of performance going into Bahrain? They did as they finished in the race in P7 and P8. Their qualifying pace in Bahrain was actually worse than their qualifying pace in Australia, but still the race pace was impressive. And it seemed at this point the only issue with the car was the pace in qualifying. 
which was proven again in Shanghai. Because in qualifying, the two McLarens had to use each other's slipstream because of how draggy the car was in a straight line. But in the race, again, it did not seem to affect them as they went on to finish in P7 with Fernando Alonso. Their pace on Sundays was a massive contrast to what they did on a Saturday. And in Baku, it happened all over again. The two McLarens once again had a very poor qualifying as they were way off the top 10. But then on race day, they still managed to score some quite good points for a midfield team. With Fernando Alonso in P7 and Stoffel van Dorn in P9. Despite Fernando severely damaging his car after a crash on the first lap. But with the B-spec car coming for the European season, things looked like they were going to improve. And their pace in qualifying in Barcelona did improve. And they did finish in P8, but it was not the improvement they were looking for. As they actually had a better qualifying at the 2017 Spanish Grand Prix than they did in 2018. That is where the embarrassment starts. Then in Monaco, where they were expected to do well, they were not good enough. Alonso did qualify in P8, but retired from the race with a gearbox issue, as the Honda-powered Toro Rosso Pierre Gasly finished in P7. The embarrassment deepens. In Canada, both McLarens were out-qualified by a Honda-powered Toro Rosso, and the race for them got even worse as they had absolutely no pace to show. With Alonso retiring from the race with some kind of reliability issue, the embarrassment is now becoming a crisis. And in France, it became a crisis. As at this point, McLaren looked worse with Renault than they did with Honda. Qualifying very low down in France and finishing very low down as well. And because of this crisis, Eric Boulier left as the racing director. After sweltering under the pressure of working for McLaren. And in Austria, their pace did not seem to improve. But they still got some points with Fernando Alonso finishing P8 after starting from the pit lane as McLaren in Austria kept breaking front wing after front wing. At Silverstone again in qualifying they did not show any pace but with Fernando Alonso they finished P8 in the race. Fernando continuing to show why he is such a good driver. But then the German Grand Prix turned out for McLaren to just be pointless. As Fernando missed out on points and Stoffel van Dorn was easily the worst driver on the grid. Qualifying at the back even behind the two Williams. Now that is embarrassing. And in qualifying in Budapest, their pace did not seem to improve again. But in the race, Fernando Alonso went on again to finish in P8. And Stoffel van Dorn should have finished in the points, but he did not because of a reliability issue. Denying him a very deserved P9. But considering their troubles, I think the Hungarian Grand Prix was a good way to send McLaren into the summer break. Because 2018 has been an embarrassing episode. And these stats prove that too. They are P7 in the Constructors with only 52 points, with one top 5 finish and 11 points finishes. For a team that was supposed to be competing with Red Bull, that is laughable. And that has resulted in Fernando Alonso's results not being that good. He is 9th in the Drivers' Championship with 44 points. He is the person that has McLaren's only top 5 finish and has 8 points finishes. And for Stoffel, in terms of results, it has been very disappointing. He is currently 16th in the Drivers' Championship with just 8 points. He has no top 5 finishes and has only finished in the points 3 times. Thank God for him it is the summer break. McLaren's best race of 2018 I'd have to say was the Australian Grand Prix. Because in terms of the performance of the car I've not been impressed by them at any other race. And I'm basically only selecting this because of the result. Because I think 2018 has just been so poor. But their worst race of 2018 has to be the French Grand Prix. At that weekend, they were an absolute atrocity to their legacy. They had no pace whatsoever and were only faster than the two Williams. And considering how poor Williams have been, that is nowhere near good enough. McLaren coming into 2018 thought they had one of the best chassis on the grid. That is total BS. And them competing with Red Bull is a complete pipe dream. It was never going to happen. Now for their drivers, Fernando this season has been very good. Now I know yes his results have not, but the McLaren car is so bad. But still he has finished in the points on 8 occasions. That is very impressive again considering how poor McLaren have been. Why on earth did Fernando go to McLaren? In my opinion though for Stoffel he has had a 50-50 season. In the first 6 races I thought he was doing enough to secure a seat at McLaren for 2019. But from Canada to Germany, he was so bad. And yes, he had a chassis problem, but still, that does not excuse how poor he was. But I would say if McLaren actually provided a good car, maybe Stoffel would be doing well. 
But no, of course, McLaren cannot produce anything good. Going ahead for these two teams, I don't think there is anything Red Bull can really improve upon. In my view, they have the best chassis on the grid, but because the Renault power unit is so bad, there is nothing they can do. But for McLaren, there is a mountain of things they need to improve. None of which they're going to actually improve upon for 2018, because there are that many issues. And at this point, if I was McLaren, I would focus all of my efforts on 2019. 2018 has been such an embarrassment, just forget about it and focus on 2019 and the new regulations. Where maybe you're not going to be a total joke. But I think for these two teams going ahead for the rest of 2018, it could be hard. Because of course with their Renault power unit at a lot of tracks coming up, they're not going to do well. But hopefully for these two teams, they have a successful end to 2018. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys, I will be back on Wednesday with a mid-season review of Renault and Force India. And as well, if you want to join the Chaz HDF1 Discord server, the link to that is down in the description, also with my Twitter. Comment down below what you thought of this video, and comment down below what do you think about Red Bull and McLaren's 2018 so far. Please comment down below what you think about those topics, and until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. goodbye.